Hello, Dan Nedelkovsky here from howtomechatronics.com. In this tutorial, we will learn how the I2C communication protocol works, and also we will make a practical example of it with the Arduino board and a sensor which uses this protocol. The I2C communication bus is very popular and broadly used by many electronic devices because it can be easily implemented in many electronic designs which require communication between a master and multiple slave devices or even multiple master devices. This implementation comes with the fact that only two wires are required for communication between up to almost 128 devices when using 7 bits addressing and up to almost 124 devices when using 10 bits addressing. How is that possible? Well, each device has a preset ID or a unique device address, so the master can choose with which device will be communicating. The two wires or lines are called a serial clock or SCL and a serial data or SDA. The SCL line is the clock signal which synchronizes the data transfer between the devices on the I2C bus and is generated by the master device. The other line is the SDA line which carries the data. The two lines are open drain which means that pull up resistors needs to be attached to them so that the lines are high because the devices on the I2 bus are active low. Commonly used values for the resistors are from 2K for higher speeds at about 400 kilobits per second up to 10K for lower speeds at about 100 kilobits per second. Ok, now let's see the data protocol of the I2C bus. The data signal is transferred in sequences of 8 bits. So after a special start condition occurs, comes the first 8 bit sequence which indicates the address of the slave to which the data is being sent. After each 8 bit sequence follows a bit called uh, acknowledge. After the first acknowledge bit, in most cases comes another addressing sequence, but this time for the internal registers of the slave device. After the addressing sequences, follows the data sequences as many until the data is completely sent and it ends with the special stop condition. Ok, let's take even closer look at these events. The start condition occurs when the data line drops low while the clock line is still high. After this, the clock starts and each data bit is transferred during each clock pulse. The device addressing sequence starts with the most significant bit first and ends with the least significant bit and it's actually composed of 7 bits because the 8th bit is used for indicating whether the master will write to the slave logic low or read from it logic high. The next bit, acknowledged, is used by the slave device to indicate whether it has successfully received the previous sequence of bits. So at this time the master device hands the control of the SDA line over to the slave device and if the slave device has successfully received the previous sequence, it will pull the SDA line down to the condition called acknowledge. If the slave does not pull the SDA line down, the condition is called not acknowledged and means that it didn't successfully receive the previous sequence which can be caused by several reasons. For example, the slave might be busy, might not understand the received data or command, cannot receive any more data and so on. In such a case, the master device decides how it will proceed. Next is the internal registers addressing. The internal registers are locations in the slave's memory containing various information or data. For example, the ADX345 accelerometer has a unique device address and additional internal registers addresses for the X, Y and Z axis. So if we want to read the data of the X axis, First, we need to send the device address and then the particular internal register address for the X axis. These addresses can be found from the datasheet of the sensor. After the addressing, the data transfer sequences begin either from the master or the slave depending on the selected mode at the read-write bit. 
After the data is completely sent, the transfer will end with a stop condition which occurs when the SDL line goes from low to high while the SCL line is high. That's how the I2C communication protocol works and now let's make an example and demonstrate it using the Arduino board and some sensors. So as an example, I will use the GY80 breakout board which consists 5 different sensors and the GY521 breakout board which consists 3 different sensors. So we can get data from 8 different sensors with just 2 wires with the I2C bus. Here's how we will connect the boards. The serial clock pin of the Arduino board will be connected to the serial clock pins of the two breakout boards and the same goes for the serial data pins and also we will power the boards with the ground and the 5 volts pin from the Arduino board. Note here that we are not using pull up resistors because the breakout boards already have. Now in order to communicate with these chips or sensors we need to know their unique addresses. We can find them from the data sheets of the sensors. For the GY80 breakout board, we have the following four addresses: a hexadecimal 53 for the 3 axis accelerometer, a hexadecimal 69 for the 3 axis gyro, a hexadecimal 1A for the 3 axis magnetometer, and a hexadecimal 77 for the barometer and the thermometer sensor. For the GY521 breakout board, we have only one address and that's the hexadecimal 68. We can also get or check the addresses using the I2C scanner sketch, which can be found from the Arduino official website. So if we upload and run that sketch, we will get the addresses of the connected devices on the I2C bus. Ok, so after we have found the addresses of the devices, we also need to find the addresses of their internal registers in order to read the data from them. For example, if we want to read the data for the x-axis from the 3-axis accelerometer sensor of the GY80 breakout board, we need to find the internal register address where the data of the x-axis is stored. From the datasheet of the sensor, we can see that the data for the x-axis is actually stored in two registers, data x0 with a hexadecimal address 32 and data x1 with a hexadecimal address 33. Now let's make the code that will get the data for the x-axis. So we will use the Arduino wire library, which has to be included in the sketch. Here, first we have to define the sensor address and the two internal register addresses that we previously found. The wire.begin function will initiate the wire library and we also need to initiate the serial communication because we will use the serial monitor to show the data from the sensor. In the loop, we will start with the wire.begin transmission function which will begin the transmission to the particular sensor, the 3-axis accelerometer in our case. Then with the wire.write function, we will ask for the particular data from the two registers of the x-axis. The wire.end transmission function will end the transmission and transmit the data from the registers. Now with the wire.request from function, we will request the transmitted data or the two bytes from the two registers. The wire.available function will return the number of bytes available for retrieval and if that number match with our requested bytes, in our case uh, two bytes, using the wire.read function we will read the bytes from the two registers of the x-axis. At the end we will print the data in the serial monitor. Here's that data, but keep in mind that this is raw data and some math is needed to be done in order to get the right values of the x-axis. You can find more details for that in my next tutorial for using accelerometers with the Arduino board because I don't want to overload this tutorial because its main goal was to explain how the I2C communication works.